Welcome to the 2019 Center for Health and Nature Symposium. My name is Bita Cash. I'm professor in health policy and management at Texas A&M. I'm also director of the Center for Outcomes Research at Houston Methodist, and I'm your interim director for the Center for Health and Nature. Happy to be here and welcoming you today. We have an amazing program uh, lined up for you today. Today's symposium will uh, start with an overview of some current research at the center. Uh, we will have three keynote speakers today, four presentations that are research pitches through our uh, RFP process uh, of uh, research for the future of the center, as well as two interactive panels uh, that we encourage you to participate in. Uh, for your reference, the disclosure of financial interests and other relationships are available at the registration desk. Uh, we would like to thank everyone who is joining us today, including our friends who are joining us through the live stream. We would like this symposium to be as interactive as possible and really encourage you to ask questions, including our guests who are joining us through the live stream. Uh, we will now begin with some welcoming words from the representatives of Houston Methodist, Texan by Nature, and Texas A&M. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Cash. Good morning and welcome. Uh, what a tremendous day. As I was heading home from dinner last night, I couldn't help but see a sky full of stars, not a cloud in the sky. I knew that today was just going to be one of those truly remarkable days. Um, I'm Edward Jones. I'm President and CEO of the Research Institute, and it's my distinguished pleasure and honor to welcome you here today for our, what we hope will become our annual symposium for our Center for Health and Nature. I think as many of you know, the Center for Health and Nature is really supported by three of the greatest organizations in Texas, and that is Houston Methodist, Texas A&M University, and of course, Texan by Nature. While these organizations really support the efforts, this is really the culmination of a vision and conversation by two of arguably the most powerful women in Texas, and that is the former First Lady of the United States, Mrs. Laura Bush, and of course, Cynthia Pickett Stevenson. Um, I, I don't know Mrs. Bush personally. I hope to, to get to know you a bit, but I do know Cynthia. And for those of you that know Cynthia, you know when she has an idea, she's her own force of nature. And I've learned in working with Cynthia, the best words are, yes, ma'am, <laughs> and what can I do to help? And so as I was asked to give some opening remarks, I was asked to keep them to five minutes. And I apologize because I'm going to stray maybe a minute or two beyond that, because I would like to share with you a bit of a personal story um, of what really health and nature has meant uh, to myself and my family over the past few months. <clears throat> this is my brother, Christopher Jones. He passed away earlier this year, the age of 52, an unfortunate diagnosis of a rare form of brain cancer with a diagnosis that gave him four to six weeks to live. This has obviously been traumatic for myself and my family. <clears throat> but it gave us an opportunity that I'm grateful for. I'm grateful that he didn't have to suffer for very long. And I'm grateful for the time that we had together. One can imagine two brothers getting together, reflecting all the trouble we got into, the things we did, most of the things we got caught doing, a few of those that we didn't. I can tell you which list was shorter. <laughs> Um, we also had a chance to reflect on conversations and questions that there really aren't good answers for. But we also shared a passion for nature. And we came at it as we did so many things from different angles. I drive a big truck. He drove a small little Mercedes convertible. We just were different as two brothers could be. But we shared an interest in nature and the beauty of nature. He was an architect and he was a student of historic preservation. And he lived in Atlanta, and he was very influential in many of the preservation efforts in Atlanta. He and his partner were also benefactors for the Atlanta Botanical Gardens, and he spent a lot of his time there. And if you know downtown Atlanta, it's a beautiful place, beautiful gardens, and, it, and it, it's adjacent to Piedmont Park. And he would spend time there reflecting. I, on the other hand, am a hobbyist. 
I tinker in the yard and I spend entirely too much money at the Houston Garden Center every season because I have no idea what to plant or how to keep it alive. <laughs> <laughs> but as we had the chance to talk and, and look, his desire was to get back to the botanical garden, and he wasn't able to do that. But the botanical garden came to him. And this is one of the many orchids that were in his room. And it was absolutely stunning. And it was so comforting as part of those conversations. And we talked in many different ways. And um, unfortunately, I know many of you have been through similar situations. And you understand a hospital environment and the necessary harshness of that environment. There are people in and out, and there are gowns, and there are foreign objects, and there are beeps and poking and prodding, and that is part of what makes healthcare work. But in these times, bringing a softer touch is so important. And as we talked that through, this was his quote. You know, he said, Nature, you feel better because it makes your heart feel better. And I don't think I could have summed it up any better. And I hadn't intended on sharing that today, but I thought it was so poignant in what we are here to accomplish. We're going to hear today from many distinguished speakers. We're going to hear from a scientific perspective. We're going to hear from outcomes, health economics, policy perspectives. And they're going to give us data. And they're going to give us tools. And those tools are going to allow us to push forward and stay disciplined in approach and ensuring that we meld health, healing, and nature together. But I would subscribe, that's not the reason to do it. The reason to do it is just because it's the right thing to do. So there's an awful lot of folks that have brought us here together and that have made this possible today. Um, I can't possibly go through them all, but I'd like to point out a few. Dr. Mark Boom, our system president and CEO. Of course, the former First Lady of the United States and founder of the Texan by Nature, Mrs. Laura Bush. Dr. Carrie Byington, who I'll introduce in just a moment. Dr. Bita Cash, who has really developed the center and created a home for the center here at Houston Methodist. The founders and steering committee, Cynthia, thank you so much for your tireless efforts. Joni Carswell, who you'll hear from shortly. Dr. Robert Jackson, Dr. Rebecca Hall. Dr. Jay Maddock, and Dr. Marcia Ori, and of course the organizing committee. None of this happens without our hard work and effort. Amy Brown and Dominica Delgado. And so thank you very much. It's my pleasure to introduce now Dr. Carrie Byington. Um, Dr. Carrie Byington is a friend, a colleague. She also sits on the Houston Methodist Research Institute Board of Directors. She serves as the Vice Chancellor for Health Services at Texas A&M University. She's the dean of the Texas A&M College of Medicine. They asked me to keep this to five minutes, and I could go on and on. She's an elected member of the National Academy of Inventors, an elected member to the esteemed National Academy of Medicine. And so please join me in welcoming Dr. Byington. Thank you very much. <laughs> Howdy. Howdy. And good morning. As Ed said, I'm Dr. Carrie Byington. I'm here from A&M, and it is my great privilege and honor to bring you greetings from Chancellor Sharp and from all of us at Texas A&M who enthusiastically support this effort. For those of you who are joining us from another state or another country, welcome to Texas. I am a proud uh, Texas native. I grew up in South Texas, and I find this state to be so inspiring. The natural landscapes and the beauty of this state really energize us. And as a physician and as a cancer survivor myself, I understand firsthand the healing power of nature. But only recently has the medical community begun uh, to understand that medical care is more effective when we have environments that promote healing. Texas A&M is a proud partner with Houston Methodist Hospital and Texan by Nature and to form this wonderful and innovative Center for Health and Nature. This center, housed within the Center for Outcomes and Research at Houston Methodist Hospital, is led by Dr. Bita Cash from the Texas A&M School of Public Health and Dr. Cash is advancing science and practice, promoting health and the natural world. The center is hard at work developing clinical applications and evidence to, to programs to help us heal. 
You will hear some of this evidence today by hearing studies that are presented by some of our distinguished speakers. One of those will be about combating burnout among healthcare professionals, a crisis nationally. As we face physician shortage, we need to make sure that everyone who's providing health care is able to uh, thrive in the environments in which they work. You will also hear another study about the health effects of nature on cardiovascular wellness and healing, a really important uh, cause of morbidity and mortality in the United States. I'm also very proud as an Aggie that one of the first tangible efforts of the center is a health and nature healing garden, which I hope you have a chance to visit while you are here on this site. The healing garden was designed by a Texas A&M architect student named Philip Hammond. This is something that we love to do at A&M, engage our undergraduates, graduates, and all of our students in real world uh, applications of their, of their skills and of their knowledge. The healing garden here serves as a lab for our research, and it's also a place where healthcare workers and patients can come in for a quiet moment of reflection and time in green space. And then finally, another major effort of the center is today's conference. We're so proud to be a co-host and hope that this will become an annual event and an event that we all look forward to. So I ask you and I hope that you will um, engage and enjoy this, uh, this conference and this event. We hope that you will leave inspired by new ideas and ready to think about new ways that health and nature can intersect. So it is now my pleasure and honor to introduce Joni Croswell, which there she is, okay, who is the CEO and president of Texans by Nature. She is a fifth-generation Texan and has been a business leader and, importantly, is also a graduate of Texas A&M. Giggum. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. With that introduction, I feel like I should say howdy instead of good morning. <laughs> so, Good morning, everyone. What a delight it is to be here today with all of you. It is truly a privilege and an honor to host this symposium with our partners, Houston Methodist Hospital and Texas A&M University. Last night, I had the opportunity to have dinner with a few of you, and the question kept coming up, how did this partnership come about? How did a world-leading, as an Aggie I'll say that, um, academic institution like Texas A&M partner with a world-class medical system like Houston Methodist, how did a conservation nonprofit um, come to be part of this partnership? Well, I'll go back to our founding. In 2011, Texan by Nature's founders, former First Lady Laura Bush, Reagan Gammon, and Catherine Armstrong came together with a vision for collaborative conservation that I believe can and will ultimately change the world. They posed the question, what if? What if we held nature as a vital piece of our future? What if we worked together to respect our resources? What if caregivers, business leaders, landowners, and everyone in between understood the impact of our actions? What if we each conserved and even regenerated our resources what if our businesses, healthcare institutions, and faith organizations looked at nature as critical to long-term success? We're fortunate to have these visionary leaders with us this morning, as well as several of our other board members, Neil Wilkins, Tina Buford, Ray Engel, Houston Methodist's own CEO, Mark Boom, and last but definitely not least, the vision and force behind the Center for Health and Nature, Cynthia Pickett Stevenson. So the questions for, uh, posed by our founders led to the creation of Texan by Nature. At Texan by Nature, we believe that our quality of life and our prosperity are ultimately dependent upon our natural resources. We work to bring organizations together from all facets to amplify and to accelerate science-based projects. 
projects that have a meaningful and positive return on conservation, a return that is equally beneficial to our people and health, to our economic development and prosperity, and of course to our natural resources. Today's partnership and symposium is a direct result of a gathering we held right here in 2016 that highlighted the lack of research and understanding of nature's impact on health. Ed shared earlier the impact that it had on he and his brother, and it's something that we know, but the science and data was lacking. So leaders from all three organizations said, what if? What if we formed a center where we could push research forward? We could share and collaborate with the world so that we were all building on one another's knowledge and discoveries. We believe, and I believe personally, that this what if will result in research collaborations that will prove the value of our natural resources for health and health care throughout the entire spectrum from prevention through to recovery. So I welcome each and every one of you to the What If team. I'm glad you're here. I know you didn't know you were joining the team today, but welcome. <laughs> so there have been notable quantum leaps in medicine over time. The discovery of antibiotics, the advent of DNA sequencing. I believe that today we're on the cusp of the next great set of advances. We are here to formally establish the link between nature and medicine and it's going to change so many things. Some of Texan by Nature's conservation partners are here with us today, and they are already using research and science to push their initiatives forward. Groups such as Rivers of Recovery, who help veterans with PTSD recover through outdoor activities. Our partner, the Texas Trees Foundation, who are planting trees on campuses all over Dallas to combat childhood obesity, asthma, and other illnesses. They're also partnering with Southwestern Medical in Dallas to provide access to nature and the healing process. And finally, Texas Children in Nature, who understand that exposure to nature results in confidence, strength, team mentality, reliability, problem solving, and creativity, all markers of a healthy mind. The progress is here all around us, and we're delighted that you're here with our Center for Health and Nature to build on one another's knowledge and research. I couldn't be more excited to learn from our speakers today. As mentioned earlier, they're here from all over, and uh, you will get on, get on with the show because we have quite the, the knowledge lined up today. So I am honored to welcome a dear man and spiritual leader, Reverend Charles Milliken. Reverend Milliken personifies the nature, faith, health connection is in his daily life. And he is the Vice President of Spiritual Care and Values Integration here at Houston Methodist. Please joining me, join me in welcoming him to give our invocation. I also want to welcome you to Houston Methodist. We are a faith-based institution. It was 100 years ago, 1919, that we organized as a hospital in the Methodist Church. So I'm very proud to represent that and very proud each of you are here. This indeed is a spiritual experience as well as a scientific one because as a hospital we believe in unparalleled safety, quality, service, and innovation. Let us pray. Our most gracious and loving God, we're reminded once more that life consists of measures and weights, balances of work and rest, and sunlight and darkness. Without these elements, coupled with nutrition and good health, neither plants, nor animals, nor we as human beings are at our very best. As we come together today to hear, learn, and examine some of the latest resources and findings related to health and nature, and the relationship so critical between the two, equip us with the ability to not only understand all that's before us, but the ability to comprehend our role in the successful outcomes so necessary to live life at its fullest. We stand amazed at what creation can do. We marvel how trees bud, flowers bloom, and new life takes place in unexpected ways. We are constantly discovering new ways and means whereby the mind, coupled with the latest technologies, 
allows us to peek into what is yet to come. Creation is still happening. We are witnesses of it every day. Bless the work of this center, along with the personnel, researchers, clinicians, and students who are uncovering these new and exciting discoveries. Give us the ability to reach beyond what we can easily see to what we know can occur when the sharpest mind, minds find new roads and avenues into the future of health care where it concerns nature and all of its benefits. For we pray this in your holy name. Amen.